category of compounds is the salt category. And we define salts as usually neutral. Ionic always substances. Uh, so they're compounds, when I say neutral substances, they form neutral solutions. They dissolve in water, and they, they have a pH of 7 usually, that solution does. There are such things as acidic salts and basic salts, and we will talk about them. But for the most part, especially in Regents Chemistry, when you're dealing with salts, they tend to be neutral salts, or salts that form neutral solutions when they dissolve in water, neutral aqueous solutions. Uh, so by forming neutral solutions, what that means is they have positive ions other than hydrogen, other than H+, and negative ions other than hydroxide, or OH-. So when they dissociate, you are not going to see an H plus or OH minus concentration other than that you get from the auto ionization of water. They do not increase the OH minus or H plus ion concentration. All right? There are four combinations that we have talked about that result in ionic compounds. One is a metal and a non-metal. The second is a metal and a polyatomic ion. The third is a polyatomic ion and a non-metal. And the fourth is a polyatomic ion bonded with a polyatomic ion. And you'll notice that in each of those scenarios, you have a cation, you have an anion. Cation, anion cation, polyatomic like NH4, NH4+, plus, um, and then an anion, something like chloride, and then down at the bottom a cation, again like NH4+, plus, and a polyatomic anion like NO3-. minus. Each one results uh, in a, an ionic substance that when it dissolves in water doesn't affect H plus or OH minus concentration, but it does give you mobile ions. Okay? And that allows it to conduct electricity and be classified as an electrolyte. Some examples of salts. And, you know, get used to what we did in Unit 4. And ever since Unit 4, break them up into their parts. There's a metal and a non-metal example. Another metal and a non-metal. All of the first three are group 1 and 2 metals with halides. And then uh, the fourth example, you have a metal, a group 1 metal with a polyatomic ion. Good examples of salts, and you can see there's no OH- present in the formula. There's no H- plus in the formula. Something we'll talk about later. Uh, nothing in this generates OH- minus or H- plus either. This should be review, our neutralization reaction. We've talked about this before. Not only should you be able to define it, you should be able to describe it with words. That means an acid plus a base results in a salt plus water. You should also be able to identify an example. Uh, that you can spot, oh, those reactants, that reactant's an acid, that one's a base, that product's a salt, and water's also a product. A number of ways you need to be able to identify neutralization reactions, one of your key terms. And uh, for all of these, the resulting pH is 7. Oops. That's because water has a pH of 7, and the salt formed usually has no effect on pH to bring that in either direction, away from 7. Exception to the rule, we said that they are usually neutral. NH4Cl is what we call an acidic salt. It's the salt of a weak acid. Okay? An acidic salt. So NH4Cl, when this thing breaks apart, we split it into its 
a cation and anion. You end up with NH4 plus and Cl minus. It's the NH4 plus, this guy here, that can generate H plus. It produces H plus ions, hydrogen ions, hydronium ions, uh, in aqueous solution. Since it generates H plus, it increases the hydrogen or hydronium ion concentration, it lowers the pH and makes the solution acidic. Okay, so the pH will be less than 7. That's an exception. Uh, rarely do they bring this sort of thing up on the Regents exam, but it is good to see it. Again, we talked about this before. Electrolytes, uh, acids, bases, salts, all three. Each of these qualifies as an electrolyte. That means they all dissolve in water, and they do so. Uh, when they do so, they ionize. When they ionize, and they have mobile ions in solution, or mobile charges, that means they can conduct electricity. The light bulb will go on. I'm going to uh, play this link now. If you don't want to watch the animation, you can go ahead and stop and move on to the next page. If you do, feel free. This is a great one, and, and it takes you through. There's a great tutorial that goes with it. Okay, it says it can read at the bottom. An electrolyte is a substance that, when it's dissolved in water, results in a solution that can conduct electricity. The light bulb will light if a substance is an electrolyte. We have two electrodes in submerged in the solution that create a circuit. We dissolve something like sodium chloride that's a soluble salt. And it's assumed, we, we know this, to completely dissociate into its separate positive and negative ions. Since it dissolves, dissociates 100%, it's a strong electrolyte. That means it's got a large number of ions and the light, goes, light bulb goes on very brightly. Polar water molecules come in here, as you can see, and they interact with the positive and negative ions of the salt, breaking them apart. The negative ends are attracted to positive sodium, positive ends are attracted to the negative chloride, and the interaction causes this solute to break apart into its separate ions. Okay, when we use something like hydrofluoric acid, this is a gas in STP, we bubble it into the water. It doesn't ionize completely. It's a weak acid, and it's also a weak electrolyte. You see the light bulb goes on, but it's dim. The solution contains only a small number of ions, so it's weakly conducting electricity. In equilibrium, this, this solution is mostly non-ionized. It's actually about one in every, say, uh, 100 or 1,000 that, that split apart in the H plus and uh, F minus. Methanol is another example. This is an alcohol. It looks like, because there's an OH on the end of it, a base, but it's not. It's covalent with OH. Since it's covalent with OH, this doesn't dissociate at all. Alcohols don't dissociate. They don't ionize. That's why the light bulb doesn't even go on. Methanol molecules have a polar OH group. But again, since this is covalent, all you have are IMFs that interact with the water. There's no dissociation, nothing ionizes, all you get is a dipole-dipole interaction since there's no ionization, no mobile ions. When this uh, methanol dissolves in water, it can't conduct electricity. Okay, the attractions between the water molecules and the methanol break the methanol molecules apart from one another, but they don't break the methanol into separate ions. Okay, since it remains intact, uh, dissolving, you can see, it's the seven is that dissolving doesn't mean you have an electrolyte. Dissolving and ionizing is the only way you end up with an electrolyte. 